So we're going to take a short break from energy and just talk about springs for a sec. Yeah, so springs are on the AP test. Uh, th this kind of information is probably more geared for multiple choice questions that we would have had, but who knows, maybe they'll write an FRQ on springs. So, um, uh, first things first, right? Let's say that our spring did not follow Hooke's law and f is equal to some function of x. Well, we can just integrate both sides with respect to x to find work, right? Work is equal to the integral of f uh, dx. So we just integrate this with respect to x. Easy. So now that we got that out of the way, we are only going to talk about Hooke's spring, uh, springs that follow Hooke's law. So uh, in the original examples, right, we gave some horizontal spring and it was at some equilibrium position and it followed Hooke's law. Well, in fact, if I hung a spring from a ceiling, and let's say this was its equilibrium position, it still follows Hooke's law. If I compress it 10, 10 centimeters, it's still going to follow Hooke's law. My force is equal to negative kx. If I <laughs> decide to hang a weight here, right, and sure, the spring's going to extend. It's going to give some new equilibrium position here, let's say. Um, it's still going to follow Hooke's law, right? This is our new equilibrium. We might have had a new equilibrium, but it still follows Hooke's law. If I compress it up 10 inches, it's going, or 10 centimeters, it's still going to be negative, um, negative kx. Yeah, so that's something to note. Um, yeah. Another thing to note is the more conceptual definition of what k is. k is like how hard it is to move our spring. Because f is equal to negative kx, right? Our restoring force is proportional to k times x. If my k is really big, that means my restoring force is really big. That means the force that's pushing against me when I push my hand against the spring is huge. But if f is tiny, remember f is always positive, if f is tiny, then I can easily compress the spring. So imagine k is just like how hard it is to compress the spring. Now we get to um, the final thing about springs, which is, <coughs> gosh, my voice, um, which is combining springs. Let's say I had two springs, and I decided to combine them, so let's say maybe I paper clipped them together somehow, so they are now one big spring. And the spring coefficient on this is k1, and this is k2. What is the new coefi uh, spring coefficient? Um, well, that's um, our, the formula for the new one, so our combined, is actually just k1 plus k2. These formulas I won't just derive, because uh, some of the derivations are very difficult. Um, and probably not necessary, you can probably remember that if you have two springs, hook in springs, then you can just add them if they're in parallel. And this makes conceptual sense, um, because uh, if I had two springs and I was pulling it down on both of them, it's going to be harder than I was if I was just pulling down on one of them, right? Because now I have two springs that are pulling back up on me, or are act giving it a resistive force on me, rather than just one. Um, but instead, let's say we decide to put one spring um, in series with another. We combined, here's the one with k1, here's the one with k2. Well, then what uh, we would do to find this uh, combined is we would say k combined is, this formula is going to be kind of difficult, k1 plus 1 with k2. So we're just going to sum the reciprocals <coughs> and then we're going to take 1 over it. Um, if you notice, this is just equal to um, k1 plus k2 over k1 times k2. So, yeah, uh, we, we, we get that by, um, or shoot, other way, hey, uh, sorry, uh, k times, k1 times k2, 2 over k1, 1 plus k2, alright, um, shoot, I should write this better, yeah, so, um, the reason we have this might not be clear, but, a way to remember that if we combine in series, we get this equation, is that we just have to realize this is always going to be smaller than k1 or k2. Why is this going to be smaller? Well, this is like equal to k1 times k2 over k1 plus k2. Right? So clearly k1 plus k2, since they're both non-zero, is greater than k2. So this is uh, going to be a fraction that's less than 1, so we know by that it's going to be a fraction of k1, so it's less than k1. We can do the same thing with k2 to show it's less. So it's going to be smaller than um, both of them individually. And that's because, like, if I pull one spring, um, the other spring is also going to start to uncompress, right? So if I applied a certain force to the spring, uh, if I was, like, pulling down the spring, sure, this spring would apply some resistive force to me, but so would, um, but, right, 
I'm, my pull is going to be spread out against both of these two springs, which both are now going to provide less resistive force, um, less restoring force, right? Because maybe these two springs are equal, right? If they're equal, um, if k1 is equal to k2, this is k1 times k2 over 2k1, so this is just um, so this would be k1 squared over 2k1, which is equal to k1 over 2, right? Then it would be only half, <coughs> half of the original spring force, right? If these were the same spring and I pulled on th th this combined sequence, right? Half of my, um, half of my pull, uh, if you will, is going to go into this spring and half of it's going to go into here. So I'm only going to get half the restoring force from here, and like half the restoring force from here. I'm going to get way less restoring force um, from each of them. And it's not going to even be half, it's going to be way less because um, it, it, it's going to be way less because like I'm, I'm pulling, it's going to be spread out across all these springs, and it's it just going to be way easier for us to just pull down the spring. And yeah, so that is how. Yeah, so that's how we would. Um, yeah, find the resistive or the coefficient of the spring spring coefficient, given um, different ways that we can combine. It. If we had like combinations of them, <coughs> we just considered um, pairs at a time, and then we can figure out what the total spring is. Yeah, all right. So have fun. This is springs. Um, springs act like capacitors. If you're coming from an E and M video, and yeah, if you watch a capacitor video, that'll probably be way more helpful on explaining how um, these things or how like different circuits and things like that work. But anyways, have fun. Bye.